Ben. I hope you're doing well. Technological difficulties. Zooming in and zooming out. I guess it's just the order of things. And take a breath in, please. And the thought I just heard my mind say, what path did we choose this morning? And as one Shaolin master said, sir, the path we follow is of our own design. Perhaps it also means whatever the path that presents itself, it is our design how we will react or respond. This, I wonder how many people have, <laughs> how many people have wanted to throw their iPad across the room or say some inappropriate things <laughs> to their phone because it won't respond. You won't admit it, but I'm sure um, that you have some very interesting conversations with your devices. And I can see like from sci-fi movie like Hell with this, that that's completely inappropriate. <laughs> Wouldn't you be amazed if your device answered you back and go, that's completely inappropriate. Would you like to try again? <laughs> Maybe you should use a different finger. <laughs> you better watch it. <laughs> we should have cyberspace jokes. I'm sure there's someone who's doing it somewhere. <laughs> anyway, just uh, Sunday morning, look like it's nice and sunny outside. I'm sure your five-year-old is going, why can't we go out to play? <laughs> In time, you will do so, and you will not miss this day. Anyway, take a breath in, please. Breathe out as you release onto your seat. Releasing in our bones down, releasing our muscular system, letting it suspend and hang from uh, the uh, skeletal system. So we release our skeletal system. We release our muscular system. But even before those two, release in your nervous system, your neurological net. Allow it to settle. Then your circulatory system, so you try to feel uh, this life force fluid flowing through the various channels. Then your respiratory system. Pay attention, breathing in with mindfulness and awareness. Breathing out with mindfulness and awareness. Then our integral system, a glandular system. Imagine all of the various uh, glands of the body that they are coming in the balance. Like uh, must be, there must be a high pollen count now, I wonder. Oh, okay, good. You get up and you feel in your throat, you feel in your nose, you feel in your brain, you drink some water to clear it out. You go, what's going on? So all of these systems coming in to balance. But perhaps the main system that needs to be recognized as already balanced is our mind. 
And when I say the recognition of our mind, also recognition of our heart. So the balancing between our emotional mind and our cognizing mind, using that word, cognizing. So from the old shaman mystic traditions, there is the path of the head and there's the path of the heart. Which do you follow? The unity of the two, the head and the heart, balance and unity. So just focus for a moment your intellect, your thinking, thoughts and perceptions, identifying, etc. Or in balance with what are you feeling at this moment? And then sort of visualizing the confluence, two streams flowing into one. And as those two streams flow into one, imagine they empty out into a vast ocean. A vast ocean of unity. Take a breath in. Breathing out as we release once again onto our seat. I tried to go over and over to Lopez's words. Relax, which I changed to let go, release, to have the experience of relaxing. So let go. And then to Lopa, I wonder if he's talking to Naropa. Then he says, when? To do that at this present moment, right at this moment, Whatever is going on, let go, let be, relax. But even I've heard Lama Kaisi is, you, you don't say, okay, relax, okay, okay, I'm, I'm relaxing. Oh, okay, that's not relaxing. Just relax, let go. Now, just rest. Do you really rest? Do we really rest? When you go outside, do you rest in the stillness of the space and listen to the sounds of the birds as they permeate that space? And maybe when you look up into the sky, then you see faces of bunnies <laughs> going by. <laughs> or there's Mr. Jones's face. Oh, look at his nose. Now it looks like a giraffe. It's a smiling face. Then you let your mind wander like a small child. Sometimes the sky is blue and sometimes it is clouded as they go by. And then perhaps today you'll take a walk or you'll sit in your backyard or on your veranda <laughs> or your porch. And you'll look at the quality of the air and the light and maybe the subtleness of the breeze and how it moves the leaves. And as you can see now, nature knows it is time to bloom and it does so in the proper time. And the green of the leaves and the color of the flowers and their subtle scent, even though there may be pollen that disturbs us by the hour, it is still the beauty of nature 
coming forth, isn't it? Perhaps we will relax right now and rest and recognize that we are not separate from that nature in which we are partaking of and viewing. And as nature finds its own balance, may we too fall into the same balance and recognize that our strife and our suffering and our misplaced false identification of desires is nothing more than an illusion that we are experiencing that is directing us back to find our way upon our path which we create. Breathing in, breathing out. Rest for a moment, do not wonder. Oh, I must ring the bell and beat the drum. Make offerings and recitation and visualization. To let go of all of that, it is merely a vehicle to get at where we are presently at. And where might that be other than the great expanse of space? And awareness that exists in unity. Short glimpses, many times, Boko Ergen Rinpoche would say. And then Lama Kazi said the distance of the nose tip to the space between the eyebrow. That much, if you can see. But then also, somewhere I heard in passing that that space is how close you are to realizing the innate nature of your own enlightened quality. This short gap, but it seems so immense when we're clouded by sentiment, grasping and falsity of the projections of ego, which has no substance in and of itself, but appears nothing more than a dream, a reflection, illusion, an apparition, a dream. Perhaps we are already awakened, but not realizing, but staying in our own confusion unending, it seems. Take a breath in and breathe out. Present moment wakefulness or present moment being. Moment to moment being. Like the old text from the late 60s, which the babies don't know. Be here now. Baba Ramdas, not Ramdas. Yeah, Ramdas was the uh, one of the authors. Baba Ji, his master, Baba Ji, Mukdananda, early masters. Be here now. Takes on at least a certain gravity, don't you think? To be here now, breathe in, breathe out and rest. Then check, have you settled in yet? 
Have you released from the dreaming of yesterday and perhaps have awoken from the dream of last night? And not carrying the illusion of dreaming into this morning. That's not right, is it? Let go of dreaming. And the punchline could be, what should I do? Rest, let go, let be, be here now. Maybe this will resound at the oddest time in your mind and you'll be thrashing about and something will say, let go, let be, be here now. In my classes, Monday, Wednesday, we clean the floor. Only sweep the floor. I am sweeping. I am sweeping. It carries over into, I am washing the dishes. I am washing the dishes. I am washing the dishes. It carries over into, I'm cutting the vegetables. I'm cutting the vegetables. I'm cutting the vegetables. And so forth. You try. Do what you're doing when and while you're doing. The good practice. Most of the time, we are very good at multitasking, aren't we? We can be thinking one thing, doing something else, and thinking about doing something else other than what we're thinking and what we're doing at that moment. I don't know about you, but I do understand why the exhaustion. Try, what am I doing now? In the Zen and in the Thai tradition, I am sitting. I am sitting. I am sitting. So being with Thai masters, we practice intending to walk, intending to walk, intending to walk. I am walking, I am walking. Or they sweep the path as they walk, especially the forest monks. I am sweeping, I am sweeping, or I am eating. Even I am sleeping, I am sleeping, I am sleeping. So you can bring practice into every moment, mindfulness and awareness. Again, just to define, mindfulness, paying attention like I'm doing now, as I'm talking, talking, I'm also thinking myself, doing exactly what I'm saying. Talking, talking, time is ticking. Oh, better check the time. Oh, then so many thoughts. Oh, my wind-up watch, my wind-up mind. <laughs> Wish it would stop, just like the clock. <laughs> so I wind up the clock, but I'm paying attention. So I don't overwind it and break it then I already know, mindful and aware. So our mind is so amazing. Check the time, stay aware, and use it as best as you can, properly as you go about. So I think trying to set the stage this morning as I have been thinking, take a breath in once again, and I was, uh, again, reflecting back, Mama Kazi, again, came to me in a dream over the last several nights. Um, do you begin by first Long Padrasapa, which we always did? Or should I say, most precious guru, please think of me. But then, as it comes to me at this moment, if our mind is already cluttered and carrying baggage from the past, which we do. How 
can I truly connect to the precious Guru? So therefore, having said that at this moment, we have no course but to venture into. Visualize Dorji Simpa above you. To cleanse and purify so that we can do what? You should already hear me say, or perhaps you say to yourself, be here now. <laughs> Breathing in. Breathing out. Doji Simpa, to cleanse and purify, not just for ourselves, but we do so for the benefit of all sentient beings. I, I keep coming back to, we are venturing in now to the second year of pandemic. And the virus, the symptomatic, we treat the symptoms and not get to the root of the causality of our strife and suffering, ignorance, misplaced desire, false attachment looking for happiness, and anger. We can still in this, uh, I'm not as informed as I should be, still shootings, killing, anger, and you know the drills, the stories better than I do. So what is the causality when we say ignorance, desire, attachment, anger, and so forth? How might we root out that virus? What is the vaccination or the vaccine for that? Then you should already have said the four immeasurables, as I was just reading. And it says impartiality first, impartiality. Then loving kindness and compassion and joyousness. Root out the real virus. Even though we have the pandemic, and hopefully we know it's doing well in some places in terms of it's receding and in some places it is not. Why? I think we could go back to the three root causes once again, which you already know. So as you practice again, as I was about to practice and back and forth with this technology, why must we practice? We must practice for the benefit of all sentient beings who are less fortunate than ourselves, who are suffering immensely, much more than any one of us at this very moment. May all of our efforts and all of our practices be toward the liberation of the virus that is creating the inner irritations that brings about suffering and prejudice and hatred and anger and killing. Doesn't it make you sad? Or you like the watching Edinburgh, uh, which has such a wonderful voice, is talking about the ostrich. And somehow these large birds gather together and chase off the lions so their offspring could drink water. Oh, such fierceness, but also such compassion. And to go, oh, we make fun of the ostrich, but maybe we should be like ostrich, having the strength to ward off the lions. Anyway, I think you understand. I hope so. I don't mean to bore you. I'm only 
listening to what's in my heart, listening into what's in my head, and trying to, as it says, in the words of my perfect masters, take a breath in, breathe out, and with vividness, it's this vivid recitation, vivid visualization. You recognize to cleanse and purify pure vision. May I prepare the vessel so that I may earnestly practice for the benefit of all sentient beings. Anara do me bo ba za wa zi de me bre ya te za ra ta ba zi de te de 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 the do 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 Zedum Zedum Guru, Men <laughs> Do I am a boy, I do 
And again, breathing, breathing out. So again, it's really wonderful to see if you have prayer wheel, you're turning. And I remember, again, it's been many, many years ago. And one West, Western person said to me, why you turn the, the prayer wheel? This is only a cultural thing that the uh, uh, Tibetans do. And I go, I think I just, in my smart way, went, really? <laughs> and that's all I said, really? <laughs> Obviously, um, whatever their thinking process was, it was not my business. The reason we turn the prayer wheel, we do so for the benefit of all sentient beings. Throughout the Himalayan region, um, whether they're Ladakhi or Nepal or Tibetan, Sikhanese or Bhutanese, they all have prayer wheel. And we have visions or versions of prayer wheels uh, in various cultures. But we're turning it like a little generator and millions of uh, recitations of mantras are going out throughout the totality of space for the benefit of all sentient beings. So we turn the wheel as a blessing for all sentient beings. It's not just trying to keep our hands occupied, the old sort of mm, joke. Ruffian people had to keep one hand occupied with the beads, the other hand occupied with the wheel, and the mouth occupied with recitations, and the mind uh, occupied with visualizations. Therefore, we cannot make any negative comment <laughs> and stay out of trouble. <laughs> Maybe it's still that way. But when you turn the wheel, you think, oh, I do it for all who's are suffering. I do it 
uh, for all those who are in anguish, who are in pain, may they be healed by the turning of the wheel. Many times I remember going to my various teachers and they take their prayer wheel and they, oh, you're receiving the blessings from all of the mantras that are located in your prayer wheel. So turn your prayer wheel whenever you feel knowing why you're doing it. It's important to know why we're doing certain things. And if you have questions, if I can answer, then I will. If I can't, I surely can find someone who does. <laughs> Pure vision. Even in your most uh, disturbing or upsetting, or when you ask why, is this, what, how, just, oh, oh, this is pure vision. And this moment is blessing. This moment is a guide. It's opening me to experience or to see that which I may have been uh, keeping. Uh, veil on. It's now lifted. And I have the mindfulness and awareness to make a choice, to respond, to be open to whatever is occurring in our lives at this moment. And not just to go through it, but to go forward. Forward in the evolution of consciousness and the recognition of a greater expanse of loving kindness and compassion for all sentient beings until you don't know any other way. The great master, a Kinsei Rinpoche, Toku Ergen Rinpoche, Jad Rinpoche, always open. We close, open, close, open. Maybe now becoming more open, more open, more empathetic, more sensitive. Also, rest for a moment in pure vision. And from the recognition of pure vision, Guru Nipache, all of the lineage, <laughs> uh, all of the lineage, we don't, Nyingma, uh, Sakyapa, Vargupa, Gulupa, Shamba, we don't care. All Buddhists can manifest in the singularity of Guru Rinpoche. And Guru Rinpoche is no different from our master, Kunjuk Madan Rinpoche, Dugu Ur Rinpoche, Jaja Rinpoche, Ginza Rinpoche, Jogi Niman Rinpoche, so many, many, we could say. But we only focus on one, knowing that the one is the essence of the many. <laughs> Maybe something Spock would say. <laughs> no, most precious guru, please think of me. Bestow the blessings that will free and ripen my mind so that I may realize as quickly as possible for the benefit of all sentient beings. Most precious guru, please think of me. Bestow the blessings that will free and ripen my mind so that I may realize as quickly as possible for the benefit of all sentient beings. Most precious Guru, please think of me. Bestow the blessings that will free and ripen my mind so that I may realize as quickly as possible for the benefit of all sentient beings. Namo Lama Lagabzojo, Zenga Lagabzojo, Jova Gabzojo, Genu Lagabzojo, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe laga to Joe, Lama laga to Joe, Sanga laga to Joe, Joe 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 la
Sentient beings are numberless. I vow to liberate them. Delusions are inexhaustible. I vow to transcend them. Dharma gates are boundless. I vow to enter them. Buddha's enlightened way is unsurpassable. I vow to embody it. Sentient beings are infinite. I vow to liberate them. Delusions are inexhaustible. I vow to transcend them. Dharma gates are boundless. I vow to enter them. Buddha's enlightened way is unsurpassable. I vow to embody it. Sentient beings are numberless. I vow to liberate them. Delusions are inexhaustible. I vow to transcend them. Dharma gates are boundless. I vow to enter them. Buddha's enlightened way is unsurpassable. I vow to embody it. This last line, when it says Buddha's enlightened way is unsurpassable, you vow to embody it, to embody, to be within your body. The essence of the Buddha's quality is already within us. We merely remove the veil of our own self-created darkness and shadows, and the light that is ever present will shine in the same way it does in the vastitudes of the cosmos, like the stars, the moon, and the sun. Perhaps it is I that shroud myself, that we cover the shadows, and thus the light of enlightenment does not come forth. But it is never off. It is always on. You don't have to worry about conserving <laughs> the conservation of energy. Don't conserve your energy because it is abundant and will be so for culprits and eons to come. Take a breath in, please. Breathing out. Whatever project, your business, maybe you have to do some errands or attend to something important and you invoke the blessings of the auspicious ones. The greatest endeavor is to join them. So you visualize the bodhisattvas and the arhats. <laughs> Sange do da ge do ma be zo do na da zo da do da je zo do me gar da zo do 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 me gar ba ge ra ro da na ba do na do ma da je da ba je do do da ba za da ba da. Dajeda, 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 Daje
all phenomena arise from their causes. Their causes are explained by the Buddha. Cessation of these causes too are taught thus by the great sage. With a wish to free all beings, I shall always go for refuge, the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, until I reach, recognize full enlightenment, induced by wisdom and compassion the day in the Buddha's presence. I generate the mind for full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. As long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, until then may I too remain and dispel the misery, the suffering, and the causality of the ignorance, and attachment, desire, killing in this world through loving kindness and compassion. I don't know about you, but every time I hear another mass shooting or this or that, then you just go. Oh. Sometimes you feel as though I did it. What did I not do to help prevent it? Why do we have so much disturbance in mind? But then I say, ignorance desire, attachment, and anger. We must practice with greater intensity, but not force, but consistency. We not, may not see the change, but we could be the change we wish to see. I know it sounds corny. We've heard many speakers and orators and commoners speak these words. But doesn't it sadden your heart when you hear once again the killing and the shooting and the prejudice and the ostracizing of this group or that group because of some mis falsity, the placement of responsibility for what is going on? When we ourselves are the culprit and the manufacturers paths that are unfolding. May we all have the pure perception and the knowledge and the wisdom and skillful means to transverse these difficult times and truly be a benefit, as I was talking to Yanjin Lama, the benefit that is of the twofold, I will switch them around. That which benefits others and benefits itself. I
Receiving the blessings, you visualize white, red, blue, and yellow for self and others cleansing and purifying. Then visualizing the lotus of one's heart open, upon which sits the moon disk. In, on that moon disk, there is a, a crystalline uh, radiant. It's uh, qualities of loving kindness and compassion, joyousness and equanimity, of merit, blessing, happiness and fortune continuously radiate out like a brilliant star or sun. Or as we've said, like the lighthouse in the darkness of the night that ferries the ships into the harbor past the jaggedness of the rocks. So this ever-present quality radiating out, bodhicitta, the enlightened mind for the benefit of all sentient beings. And when we breathe in, we draw in like bluish black smoke representing all of the impurities, all of the obscurations and hindrances defilements and negative karmic action and disease draw into the art. It just dissolves into its essence. Do not worry. Don't count. Just focus on generating this quality. We begin. And as we practice the tone limb, it is easy to bring forth those that you care for, that you love. In the same way, expand that to those we refer to. I have difficulty with that person. I label them as an uh, adversary or even they were my enemy. And then there are those <coughs> you're completely indifferent, even though you might see them every day or occasionally. Care for them all in the same way, with loving kindness and compassion. To be joyous and whatever befalls them that is good and always look to liberate them from that which is suffering. As you breathe out, the essence of the Buddha dissolves and melds and mingles with the essence of your own mind, 
which is inseparable or indivisible, you entertain by starting with the thought that the essence of the Buddha's mind and the essence of my mind are one and the same. To say my mind and Buddha's mind, the crux or the ground, emptiness and clarity, emptiness and knowingness can join together. The same quality of the Buddha's mind is the same quality of our mind. Recognize and rest. We breathe out nothing that we have gained and nothing we have lost. So just rest for a little bit. So today, again, Wednesday, I believe, is a Guru Pache day. So we'll do Guru Pache practice uh, today. So first, uh, I did not meet directly uh, with uh, Kinsey Rinpoche, Dogo Kinsey Rinpoche. But I was and had the blessing of sitting in his room in front of the seat that he sat upon at Sechen Monastery in Buddha. I may have met with uh, uh, Sechen Ramjung Rinpoche, his son. I believe uh, I have met with him. I know I met with his Yangtzein. Um, on occasions, he would sit upon my uh, lap. But Dogo Tensei Rinpoche, who was also the teacher to our teachers, he says, all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, without exception, achieve enlightenment through the practice of Bodhicitta. Bodhicitta. <clears throat> the altruistic thought that I will engage in the practice of the Dharma to fully recognize the enlightened quality within this very lifetime for the benefit of all sentient beings. The great medicine that heals us. This is what can bring about a change, this bodhicitta. Our sickness is the idea of self and others, this separation, the notion of a personal identity, or we might say the notion of the fixity of a personal identity, and the belief in the reality of phenomena. So he's pointing out the concept of nihilism and materialism, which we become fixated upon. This clinging is the cause of all suffering and the main obstacle to achieving enlightenment. So resting in the constant fixating upon dualistic conceptualization, the duality, where there is a negating of one and adhering to the other, there is always going to be suffering. The medicine of compassion and an altruistic mind that aspires to free all beings from suffering is the cure. So I think this is very appropriate. And it gives us, a, constantly gives us a direction as the great masters put forth, giving a, master, a, a, a direction. How do we chart a path forward? Not until we bring forth the flowering of bodhicitta, with real loving kindness and compassion, starting with ourselves. Again, going back to that simple phrase, Dr. Martin Luther King, Rumi, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Guru Rinpoche, Buddha, Gandhi, 
the Prophet of Jesus Christ, Muhammad, Zuzarash, and we could go on and on. And one way or the other, they all spoke of this uh, quality. If you want things to change, be that change that you want things to be. And what way, I ask myself, am I changing to how I wish things to be? And that wishing of things to be must come from that inner quality of bodhicitta. So being that we'll do the Suguru Rinpoche practice, the lotus born. He's getting ready to depart from Tibet. Tursin, of Nang, and other Tibetan yogis then ask, Master, as you intend to leave for India and will not remain here any longer, how should the Tibetan yogis of future generations behave? Or maybe we could say, Master, as you intend to leave for India and will re not remain here any longer, how should the yogis of Utah <laughs> and of future generation behave? Master Padma replied, listen here, Tibetan yogis endowed with the confidence of view and meditation. The real yogi, is your unfabricated innate nature. Yogi means to realize the wisdom of pure awareness. This is how you truly obtain the name Yogi. Namakazi, we would come to him, oh, this is going wrong, oh, I'm doing this. And he would just sort of say, what way is that for a Yogi to behave? Oh. Brace up, let go, let be. Be free from ambition in the view. Do not indulge in partiality. Be free from reference points in the meditation. Do not indulge in fixating your mind. Be free from accepting and rejecting in the conduct. Do not Indulge in clinging to the falsity of a self. Be free from abandonment and attainment in the fruition. Do not indulge in grasping to things as real. Be free from limitation and keeping samya. Do not indulge in fraud and pretense. Be free from bias toward the Buddha Dharma. Do not indulge in scholastic secretism. Appearances or delusions. Do not indulge in the ordinary manifestation of phenomena. Food is merely to sustain your life force. Do not grovel for food. Wealth is illusionary. Do not indulge in craving. Clothes are to protect you from cold. Do not indulge in opulent fashion. Equality is non-dual. Do not indulge in intimate companions. Even now we are in this period of it says, oh, quarantine, oh, isolation. And then my colleague says, oh, this is quite a blessing. We can really practice. I was talking to Yanjin Lamo, and we both said, oh, this, so, this uh, corona, and not to uh, lessen its uh, impact. But at the other end of the spectrum, if it was not for that, we not, would not be here. That's a fact. Be free from preferences to country. Do not indulge in homeland. I am glad I have no home. To really let go, doesn't matter. Make your dwelling an empty cave. 
Do not indulge. Do not, do not mistake this next statement though. Do not indulge in monastic life. And I will add out of some fantasy. Do not practice in solitude. He says, do, let me read this again. Make your dwelling an empty cave. So make your dwelling an empty cave. Do not indulge in monastic life. So one Lama in Bhutan, he's done exactly that. He left the monastery after many, many years and he went and uh, spent time in little hut high in the mountains. And then also he just sent me a picture of him sitting outside his cave. Then do your practice in solitude. And then it says, do not indulge in social gatherings. Be detached and free from clinging. Do not indulge in attachment. Be a self-liberated yogi. Do not indulge in charlatism or falsity of practice. He concludes by saying, I, Padmakara, or Guru Vichay, am now taking leave. Bye-bye. <laughs> Whether you live in the present or will appear in the future, Tibetan yogis, Salt Lake City, Utah yogis of future generation. Keep this in your heart. Thus, he gave instructions. And it says, this was the 13th chapter in the Immaculate Life story of the Lotus Born Master, telling how Master Guru Rinpoche Padma gave his last words to the yogis of Tibet, or perhaps the last words, the yogis of Utah. I think it's very pertinent to what he had to say. I will read it again. Hope that it sinks in. Now, granted, we all have varying responsibilities, our family, our job, our community, etc. <clears throat> it doesn't mean forsake those at an outward level, but within have no attachment. As long as we have attachment to samsara, we'll never be free. As long as we have attachment to hope and fear, we will always be enshackled in slavery. And as long as we continue to be attracted to the falsity of ego, we cannot realize. Wake up from the dreaming of the veil of darkness through the recognition of the intrinsic emptiness and the unity of clarity conjoined together that express themselves in compassion and loving kindness and partiality and joyousness for the benefit of all sentient beings and allow our knowledge, inner knowledge and wisdom to rise and shine like sun. In the same way, Guru Rinpoche put forth these instructions and say, by having faith and devotion and trust in me, you will always be blessed. You will always be free. <clears throat> Guru Pema Sidi Hong Hong Hurrian Yuji Nazaza Bema Giza Hola Dazen Yuji Guru Nebema Junez Azura Guru Gando Mambo Gurgi Zuda Drugi Jinji Lajez Azuzu Guru Pema Sidi Oh, Murgen, you did not zombe magiza, don't bull, I yazen, you did good. 
Sange to da zogi to na la jen to ba do da de ga to ji ta ji jen to ge pe so na ge jo la ben se sange to ba jo sange to da to ge to na ba jen to ba do da de ga to ji da ji jen to ge pe so na ge jo la ben se sange to ba jo sange to da to ge to na la jen to ba do da de ga to ji da ji jen to ge pe so na ge jo la ben se sange ジョバジョザオンバンオジョジェナランラテンバグオンバドンマハジアラガロンデネトジェトルワゴルズザンザンオンソワルズトザバダンマゾワレズドホ Namo Zavada Dagadaba, you measure Mugube, Savan to take it as a paran, I mean, the Gamma Soha. Namo Zavada Dagadaba, you measure Mugube, Sava Tatamoga de Saparan in the Gamma Soha. Namo Zavada Dagadaba, you measure Mugube, Sava Tatamoga de Saparan, I eat on better than a camp. So, Gunnada <laughs> Umsabamingene <laughs> Gonda 
So again, these uh, teachings from Guru Rinpoche and in the classical sense, there's always the outer meaning, there's the inner meaning, and there's the secret meaning, and there's the innermost secret meaning. It doesn't necessarily mean that one must forsake all of the trivialities um, and our attachment to materialism and to our everydayism. But it's saying at an inner level, inner level, to do this, to let go within our heart, within our mind, and our thoughts, etc., is to have this inner quality. Again, going back to Lama Karzi, we must walk the razor's edge between the material aspect and the non-material, between the conceptual and the non-conception, and to let go of both, to be in it, but not of it. As long as we have these human bodies, we are subject to the samsaric conditions, but must we be shackled by them, is what it's saying at an inner level. Let go. The great bodhisattvas, like Guru Rinpoche, sit in the middle of the fire, but not burn. So the metaphor, to be in the midst of the fire and uh, not burn by the flames of samsara. Good <laughs> Gigi, <laughs> 
So I must say, one, I should ask, uh, uh, Manla, is it possible I can have like maybe extra 10 minutes? Okay, thank you. And then if one understands this statement, in the recitation, one either employs the frontal aspect of Guru Bache in front of us, in front of you, or if one has had the initiation, reading, transmission, etc., then we should visualize uh, self generation. In either way, in the heart of Guru Rinpoche, we're doing it Lama Kaizi method, is the it's the same, is the same as the logo. Lama Kaizi Rinpoche left many secret teachings. His insignia here on words of my perfect teacher, Kunso Lama Shelo, is the lotus, the sun, and the moon, and the doji, which he gave to us. In the center of that doji, which lies in the heart of Guru Rinpoche, is the, the seed syllable hum. And written around that is Uma Hum Bara Guru Bema Siddhi Hum, written in a counterclockwise, moving clockwise. As it does so, Brilliant rainbow light, like the rainbow body of Guru Rinpoche, emanates in the 10 directions for the benefit of all sentient beings. So at least this much we should have, either in the outer, frontal, or self-generated. <laughs> Then I have to interrupt just again. So many Buddhists have come to visit us. You can see Mr. Sakya. He has in his store many, many Buddhas. So all of those Buddhas blessings are with us at this very moment, manifesting in the form of uh, Guru Rinpoche. So may Guru Rinpoche bless and uh, uh, activate each one of those rupas, those forms, for the benefit of all of New York City, whoever is coming into Mr. Sakya's store in Chinatown. May it radiate out, and maybe someone riding across the Manhattan Bridge will look toward the south, and they would go, what's that bright light? <laughs> they want to know it's the blessings of the Buddha. <laughs> Oh, Mother, 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 Mother,
should employ the words of Tolopa, the words of Longjimba, Longjimba. Let go of clinging, grasping, fixating, altering, and changing. Let go, let be. Let go, Tolopa, what has passed. Let go of what may come. Let go of thinking about this very moment. Don't try to figure anything out. Don't try to make anything happen. Relax right now. Yes. Self arising, Rikpa. Self arising, intrinsic primordial ground of emptiness. Its manifestation, its nature of spontaneous presence. Conjoined in unity together, manifesting the compassionate nature, bodhicitta, for the benefit of all sentient beings. Let this be your practice. Yogis of Salt Lake City, Urban Something Lane, never forsake your practice, no matter what.
Do <laughs> So simply said, uh, the Lopa said, don't recall, don't imagine, don't think, don't examine, don't control, rest. Long Chempa, let go, let be. Ramdas, be here now. So your homework, <laughs> your homework is to walk or sit or stand and listen to the sounds of the birds and feel the breeze blow upon your skin. Look into the sky and see the clouds move by. Feel the warmth of the sun and have clarity in your mind and eye. <laughs> have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. My pleasure to be with you, yogis of Salt Lake City of Utah. Uh, peace and harmony and happiness 